What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm Reggie Bryant. I am the author of The Wealth Journey and this channel is all about personal finances and personal growth. Today, we're gonna to talk about a very special topic, how to live below your means to save more money. We're gonna get right into this topic right now. This is a very important topic that I speak about very briefly in a bunch of my videos, but I've never made like a specific dedicated video on this topic. So that's what we're talking about today. How to live below your means. What does that even mean? right because one thing about people is money is very personal to them it's personal to everybody every single one of us money is personal we have emotional attachments to either spending habits or just money in general and we feel like no one can tell us what to do with our money so how dare you tell me to live below my means how dare you tell me what to do with my money that i worked so hard for this is my money i will spend it how i please but the problem with that thought process is and i felt it before so this is how i know is when you think about that and you're like well i spend my money i answer to nobody this is me i like i, I make all this money i'm going to do whatever i want with it but you're going to feel the effects of the bills because prices definitely go up inflation definitely exists and then here we go creating another version of inflation on top of the inflation that already exists so gas prices is already going up boom groceries already going up boom the price of everything is just skyrocketing and then what do we do we keep adding additions to our lives and additions to our bills, expecting things to get better. And that's just not how it works. So what is living below your means? I will paint you this picture by telling you this very brief story. So back when I started my internship, I was 20 years old and I lived in Greenville, North Carolina at the time, because that's where I went to school, ECU, shout out pirates. But anyway, I needed to go to Fayetteville, North Carolina, which was about an hour and 45 minutes away from where I lived. And I wasn't about to commute every single day for no hour and 45 freaking minutes. They done lost their minds with that one. So they provided housing. And a lot of the other people who interned with me were from other cities or even states as well. Like some were from Ohio. And a lot of them were also from North Carolina, but they were just from different cities. So we had me who was like an hour and 45 minutes away. Then we had people from Raleigh who were like three hours away. Like it was, we had housing, you know what I mean? And some people were smarter and commuted and some people were just like, screw it. Like me, I was like, screw it, I'm not commuting, I'm getting housing. The only catch was we had to pay for it with our intern money. So it was kind of like a double-edged sword. So I decided I was gonna go all out, I was gonna be comfortable, wasn't nobody gonna tell me nothing, you know? I got a fully furnished single bedroom apartment, it had the TV included, it had all the appliances included, washer, dryer, everything, and I was living good, I was comfortable. I felt like I was really doing something. I was making like $20 an hour at the time, so you really couldn't tell me nothing. Plus, I was making overtime every other week, and that was like a true time and a half to my salary. So like, I, you really couldn't tell me anything at that time. So I was like, yeah, I'm, I'll make the money. I, I'll spend it. I'm good. But then there was this one kid who was like, I'm going to get housing, but I'm going to literally chop the price in half by not getting it furnished. I'm going to bring an air mattress from home and I don't need no TV. I got my phone. And that was what he did. Like that, that was all he had for his whole apartment. He even told us, he was like, yeah, like I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm saving my money. I'm going to put this money to good use and stuff like that is kind of why we have wealth gaps between people because some people are more willing to suffer now or I won't even say suffer, to sacrifice a little bit of comfort right now to then be able to buy a world of comfort in the future. I don't think that air mattress was comfortable, but he literally was like, look, like I grew up like this. I'm used to this. I can do this. Now I'm making money. Now I'm making something with myself. I mean, this was just an internship, so this wasn't like a full-time gig. He's like, look, I'm from a completely different state, so I have to get housing, but I'm going to cut the price as much as I possibly can. And he did. So I was paying, I think I was paying like 1100 at the time because this was a single bedroom apartment, but it was fully furnished. But the regular rate was like $700. So we shaved off quite a bit off of what I was paying. That's an example of living below your means. The people who decided to commute obviously had it better financially. They got to basically pocket almost every single dollar they were making because literally at the time we were all technically living with our parents and that if we were commuting, we were just gonna be at our parents' house and then commute to work every single day. But everyone doesn't have that luxury. So when I talk about living below your means, I'm not saying necessarily that you have to go and live with somebody or live with your parents or anything like that. That's not always an option. But what I'm saying is if you're living on your own, for example, you need to control the cost as much as possible and have as little overhead as much as possible. One piece of financial advice that I was given when I was younger which I think was very, very valuable 
I think it's probably some of the most slept on advice, to be honest. It was buy your furniture piece by piece. Don't worry about buying whole sets of furniture at a time. Don't worry about getting your bedroom and your living room furnished at the same time because furniture is expensive, y'all. So I really had to take stuff like that to heart. And luckily, I had family members who were like, look, I'll, I'll get you your furniture. You've done so well. You've done well in college. You've done what you're supposed to do. We want to reward you. But again, not everyone is in that situation. So if you buy your furniture piece by piece, see the guy that I'm talking about who lived on the air mattress, he had the mindset, all right, when I really do move out for real, I'm going to have the actual money to buy as much furniture as I want. So I won't even have to buy it piece by piece. Or even he might do it piece by piece and still have that cushion of finance. But he's like, you know what? I can deal with just having an air mattress for now. And then boom, I'm going to buy a sofa. Then boom, I'm going to buy a love seat. Cool. I already have a TV. So, so I'll buy like a $50 stand for my TV to go on top of whenever I get ready from like Walmart or something like that. Mm -hmm. But you know, that's cool. I'm good with that. And since he's cool with little by little, I can sleep on the couch for a few days. You know what I'm saying? For a few months, whatever. Like I used to be sleeping on the air mattress. We upgraded. We up now. So I'm going to be sleeping on the couch. And then when he's ready, like, all right, my back's getting a little bit sore from that couch. Let me go ahead and get me a bedroom set. But it's having that delayed gratification, delaying a few things like, look, nobody's going to judge you if you just now are getting out on your own, whether it's from college, whether it's from high school. It doesn't matter. Like whether you're whenever you're getting out on your own, and you're moving out of your parents house. You now have the power to control your financial destination. And that means you're in control, no one else. So you can't be controlled by what other people think of you. Like no one's going to go into your place and judge you because you don't have it all figured out and you don't have all the furniture you need. Like, bro, you just moved out. I think nowadays we have such an expectation of having everything done so early, like at such early ages, not realizing that everyone moves at their own pace. Not realizing that other people might have furniture. Like for me, like I had my furniture because I, I had help. Like when I first moved out, I didn't pay for my furniture. I had help. So someone could go into my place thinking, oh, well, he has it all together. Like, like nah, that, that ain't even what it was. I, I didn't have no kinds of money back then. I had family members who were, who were just looking out at the time. But that doesn't mean everyone has family members who were in a position to do that thing. You know what I'm talking about? Not everyone necessarily has the same perks. So stuff like that, like buying furniture piece by piece, that's living below your means because it's like, I'm not going to overdo it. I'm not going to overspend and then be stuck with bills because if you get like entire sets, like you're definitely going to be paying a monthly payment because at the time, you're probably not going to have the funds to just throw at furniture and just have, like that's just not realistic. Like some people might have it, but a lot of us aren't going to have that. So how do we live below our means? We do things little by little. And instead of doing the monthly payment situation, we might just buy it in cash because we've been waiting, we've been delaying gratification, we've been saving. So now I have it all at once. Why would I just spread it out over monthly payments and then add more things to my bills when I don't have to? That's living below your means. Living below your means is I already have a decent car. It gets me from point A to B. I paid in cash for it three years ago. Cool. I don't need another one right now. I can afford another one but I'm good. I have family members ask me all the time, when you get a new car yet? When are you getting a new car? Like, bro, my, my $6,000 Hyundai Accent, you know what I'm saying? 2013 is doing just fine. I don't need to get another car. Not right now. I don't, there ain't nothing wrong with it. I get my regular maintenance done on it. I get everything done. So it's going to last a long time. I'm going to be driving it to the wheels fall off. You know what I mean? Like that's just, that is living below your means. Another way you can live below your means is something that I say all the time. Like, I love to eat out. I really, really do. It's probably one of my guiltiest pleasures of all time, right? And I have expensive taste and I usually get dessert. So like, whew, I, I'd be having to control myself, you know what I'm talking about? But but living below your means is understanding like, okay, I go out to eat like twice a week now and I see that it's doing a little bit of damage to my budget. It's doing a little bit of damage to my bank account. Let me go ahead and slide back a little bit. Let me think about this. Let me Let me make it instead of twice a week. Let's do once a week. So now you've cut the money you spend on eating out in half just by making that seemingly small adjustment. It might be hard, but in between there, I might be like, you know what? I'm going to cook at home. That's living below your means. Living below your means is saying like, I understand that I make, let's say I make 70K a year. The goal is to understand that I don't actually make the amount of money that it says I make gross every year because it definitely gets taxed heavily. So maybe I'm taking home 
55K a year. Then the goal is to say that this 55K, it's my goal to make sure that this 55K isn't completely spent on bills and on entertainment and on eating out and doing all these great things that adults spend money for every single day. It's to say that maybe I can get away with spending 35K of this 55k let's see what i can do to save up 20k or maybe if you're not even saving it how can i spend 30k on needs and wants and then leave the rest of it to go towards debt or like savings or even investments things of that nature things that will make your money grow in the future that's living below your means it's allocating your money to places that are going to better you in the future and that's why i made my budgeting video about the 50 30 20 rule because i think it really encapsulates what it truly means to live below your means 50% of that 55K should go towards your needs. That's your rent, that's your utilities, that's your car, and everything that you really need to operate in everyday life. And that's why I break down in that video what the difference is between wants and needs. And I have a spreadsheet for you to download in that video because it's gonna help you out in that way and understand, oh, this actually isn't even, because we get confused. We feel like we need certain things, but we don't really need them. And then 30% is the wants. That's the stuff that we don't need. 30% of that 55K should go toward wants. And then that 20%, what are we doing about that 20%? That's going towards saving money. And that money can go either towards your actual savings, your debt, your emergency fund, or it can go toward investments. That's money that you save to then put somewhere that's gonna help you in the future. Whether that's stacking it up in your bank account, that's cool. Whether that's paying off debt, that's cool. Because the thing about debt is, you need to get habitual at saving money if you're ever gonna pay off your debt. You have to be like, okay, well, I have to pay 400 a month on student loans. Cool. What am I what am I doing to save that every month? That's how you live below your means. That's how you save more money and that's how you build your net worth up over the years because it's easy to get lost in the sauce so to speak when it comes to, "Oh, I'm making good money." Like, I worked hard this week. I did 60 hours this week. How should anybody be able to ever tell me what to do with my money? It's it's not even that it's it's not even to tell you what to do with your money. It's to tell you like, "Bro, there's another way. There's another strategy to use your money there's a better way that won't leave you complaining and struggling and feeling like man what am i going to do we weren't born to struggle financially and we weren't born to only work to only barely cover our expenses we were not born for this we bring these things on ourselves and when you get redirected and when you understand oh, I can actually do better things with my, money, with my money. That's what stuff like this channel is for, It's to show you like, there's another way. You can do what you want to do, but I'm telling you, if you want to get into a better place, if, you don't, if you're not where you want to be right now, this type of advice is crucial to follow. Living below your means is the guideline. Living below your means is the foundation to your financial success because that is how you save money. That is how you get out of debt. That's how you build your investments up. Those are the three pillars of financial success. And if you keep not living below your means, you're going to have more debt. You're going to have more bills. You're going to have less invested. Does that sound like that's going to help you in the future? Because it sounds to me like it's only going to give you a comfortable, luxurious life right now that you're going to be paying for in the future. And that's why I made my video about lifestyle creep a few videos ago too. So check those videos out. Check out my budgeting video. Check out my how to master budgeting video too. And check out my lifestyle creep video. Those three are going to help you out some, but I hope you got value out of this video and that it really gave you some mindset around how to actually live below your means because people say it all the time, but it doesn't really get broken down the way it should. Like living below your means is just literally saying, I'm going to spend less than what I earn. And then I'm going to see how can I continue to decrease the amount I spend while increasing the amount I earn and then doing more with that, putting more into my savings. Because when you can do that, that's how wealth is built. That's how people leave their jobs early. That's how people retire early. It's because they're so smart with their finances now and they're so dedicated right now to doing that. And they're not getting so lost in what other people think of them and the brands and the, the iPhones and you know the new products that are coming out and looking like you have it, going to the fancy restaurants and the fancy eateries and bakeries and looking like you got it when no one can see that stuff. No one can see your bank. You might have, you could go to those places. You can have the nice clothes on. You can have all the cool products, all the latest things, all the luxury items in the world you want to and have $20 in your bank account. You don't spend all your money on all those things. Or you could have nothing in your bank account and that all could have been on credit. But someone walking around with stock and investments and a fat 401k and a nice Roth IRA, 
You don't see any of that. That's invisible because they're not going to walk up to you and show you their investing account because it ain't none of your business. So why are we making it other people's business, the things that we possess and that we own? That's the question we need to start asking ourselves when we think about living below our means because it's like, do we live above our means to show other people that we have it like that? Because that's counterintuitive. You're not actually able to sustain that because if the price goes up just 5% for your rent and things of that nature, oh, now you're complaining. Now you're hurting. Now you're asking for overtime at work. Now you're complaining about you're not getting paid enough. Where was that energy at when you decided to commit to these things financially? There wasn't none of that energy there. All the energy that was there was, I'm going to show them. Yeah, I, I got it. I'm good. No, I don't care how much it costs. I, I want that right here, right now. All I'm going to say is, if you want to live below your means, make sure you can back up every single financial decision that you make. Make sure you got the finances to back it up. Make sure you're not going negative. Make sure you're not living paycheck to paycheck. And most importantly, don't put yourself in a position to have to live below your means after you've made financial mistake after financial mistake. Now you realize you have to live below your means. It's a lot like going to the doctor and they tell you, hey, eat healthy and your blood work is gonna come back clean. You're not gonna have any health problems. You're gonna be good. You're perfectly healthy now, but your eating habits that you're telling me, that ain't it. Don't be eating that McDonald's. Don't be eating those burgers. Don't be eating that deep fried food all the time. And then you listen so you start eating healthier and now everything's coming back clean and you're good to go. But it's like if you didn't listen to that and then boom, well now literally you're gonna have a heart attack if you don't start eating clean. Now you have to do these things. Now you have no choice. Now you're having symptoms that you can't get rid of. It's like that with money too. So that's why it's better to always look at yourself in the mirror, look at your bank account, look at, am I where I wanna be right now? And if not, make those changes before you keep doing this habitually for 10 and 20 years and now you really have to live below your means, but you're 50. You don't wanna be like that, I promise you. But anyway, I'm gonna go off on a tangent. This will be like an hour long video if I don't stop right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this video short, low key. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed making it. I have a lot of fun with making these videos. I, I could just sit in front of this camera all day and just talk about stuff that I'm passionate about, but it's really to help you out. And I really hope you enjoyed this video. Anyway, that is the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant. This channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.